people, welcome back to the channel. It's been about a month since we were down in Leeds at the Moorish Sub and that's where we're headed back to today. The minute we're about 15 minutes away from pulling in there and today we're going for the furious driving cars and coffee event. See you when we get there. And here we are, back at the Motorist once again. Going to get parked up, grab a coffee, be back shortly with some footage of what's going on and who's here. Well, here we are, back at the Motorist, and where better to start than the Motorist's very own Ford Transit. It's absolutely lovely, this Ford Transit. It's been fully restored. I don't think it was done by the Motorist themselves. It's uh, our registration decorated up as the Motorist's own promotional vehicle. We did a little bit of a film of this the last time we were down here. But what a wonderful thing. If only you could still buy them in this condition. And of course, next to the transit, you don't see an awful lot of these on the road still. In fact, I can't remember the last time I actually saw one of these. The Toyota 2000, very American styling. Love the back lights on it. Somewhat ruined by the additional fog lamp. However, the 1973 registration and still on the road. Automatic as well. Not an awful lot to complain about in this car. Absolutely wonderful and nice to see. So I'll give a, an overview of everything I see here so far. As you can see, quite an amazing turnout. Cars parked everywhere. There's Matt down there in the corner, busy talking to some fans. And then there's a whole line of cars parked up along here. Downstairs and have a look at that Lincoln shortly and that American truck. And I do see over there, if you can see it, just show me C10. I really do like this. Now, if you don't know, if you've never seen one before over here in the UK, this is 76, 77, 78 Chevy C10, otherwise known as a Chevy Square Body. It is a pickup truck, it's a short bed, as you can tell, because it's got a short bed on it. Lovely eight spoke wheels, or a version of eight spoke wheels, and that lovely big rollover bar on the back, which does look as though, yes, it has the bracketry to put spotlights on. Now, is that a barbecue in the bed or a smoker? Ideally placed that. Checkerboard bed, absolutely wonderful. I do like this, I do like these. And of course, ironically, or rather oddly, on this one, there is a spare wheel underneath, but there's not actually a wheel in the tyre. It's just a tyre. Maybe that's there for some other reason. But what a beautiful thing. I heard it coming in a couple of months ago, I'm assuming, from what I heard when it came in, that it's a 350. Could be something bigger. Lovely metal flake steering wheel, which reminds me I must find a metal flake steering wheel for my truck. No good having a truck without a metal flake steering wheel on it. But anyway, C10, custom deluxe. As I say, I'm guessing it's a 350. Could be wrong, might be a 454. Although today's prices, you'd be hard pressed to think that this would be a 454. Sounded like it may well be a 350 when it pulled in. And by the looks of it, is either a member or a fan of Square Body UK. That would make a nice daily driver. Not exactly sure what colour it is. Looks like dark burgundy metallic. Not well up on the colour cards for Chevys. 17 plate though. What a lovely looking thing. I'm sure nobody can complain if that pulled up outside the house. Depending on where you live of course. And leather seats with the black interior and stick shift as well the ultimate fun vehicle moving further along we have this delightful Nissan Micra now I think this is the one that was here the last time I was here about a month ago for the Hubnut social if I'm right it's currently got 38,000 miles on this 
from new things. It's been, certainly been well looked after with no visible signs of rust anywhere, which is absolutely fantastic. And that's parked next to a rather modern Fiat 500 Arbath, which I'm led to believe can be quite nippy. Yeah, the sound of this lovely 1968, maybe 69 Morris Minor. Appears to be on, I don't know if they're real MP8 spokes or a replica of an MP8 spoke. It's a lovely interior. Extra gauges on the dashboard there in front of the driver. Of course it's got the uh, suitcase rack, the luggage rack on the back of it there. A little bit of damage to the bottom of the boot lid but nothing to be worried about in this day and age. And sort of under restoration possibly with the replacement bonnet and wing on the front there. What a nice looking car though. And of course I don't know what's under the engine. The extra gauges on the dashboard would hint that it's not stuck under there. And then once again the last time we're here for the, uh, the Hubnut Social. This Super Legacy was here at the same time. I do like these. And to the last time it was here, I'm sure I found out it was the two and a half litre though, not the three litre. Obviously, if you want to have one, you have the biggest you can find. They are a lovely car though. And next to that, we have the all important Subaru and Pretzer. Nice to have a brace of Subaru together. It's a Subaru and Pretzer wagon. A bit of lack of peel on the bonnet. But the main attraction of this one, for me at least, is the fact that it's a wagon. Well, and an old school first gen one deal. A little bit of lack of peel on the bonnet, to be expected I suppose now. Here, please. And I'm stood next to a Morris Marina 1.8 TC, which I believe stands for Twin Cam. Oh, and it's an automatic. Old school Morris Marina there. Red inserts on the door cards and the seats. Some lovely fluffy seat covers. What a nice car. And of course, the surprising thing about this Marina being here today is so far. There's not a piano on the roof. Little dent on the side of the front wing, but other than that, what a lovely condition it's in. It's early yet though. It's only just after half eleven, so there's time for the piano to fall on it yet. Renault Safran. You don't see many of these anymore either. And then that's parked up next to a Saab convertible. Fun fact, in case you don't know, I do believe Saab at one point were fined for an advert that they did, suggesting in the advert that their cars were faster than jet planes. If that's not true, and it's just fake news I found on the internet somewhere, I'm sure you let me know in the comments below. MGF convertible. In silver. I'm used to seeing these in like British racing green, not in silver. Nice condition. For all you Japanese fans out there, there's a Honda Accord. I must say that is remarkable condition. Front wheel drive hatchback. No visible rust or damage anywhere to it. Absolutely lovely. Honda Accord. And of course, with it being an auto, it's a Honda Matic. Because I can't resist another look at that Moggy. There it is. I do like that Morris Minor. Lovely Honda Prelude in black. I still can't pronounce that properly. Is it Prelude? Prelude? Anyway, it's a Honda. But it's really nice, I do like those. And of course, it looks even better parked alongside the Accord. We've got a Fiat Chica Chang. Some classic Mini. We'll live read up, like a rally Mini. That's 
Matt, I mean, it always comes up as a suggestion. Second generation Cavalier. And another Morris Minor. This is a nice one. Again, with Mini Light style wheels. I'm saying Mini Light style because obviously I'm not 100% certain as to whether they are genuine Mini Lights or just aftermarket replicas. But this is a nice condition. Morris Minor, lovely interior. All original. No modifications as far as I can see. Well, oh, that is nice. That is very nice. My chariot of choice for the day. As I said earlier, came down with the owner. The owner was driving. So I got to be passenger for a change, which meant I got to play around with cameras without having to worry about breaking any rules. And then park next to us is a citron cactus. Now this particular citron cactus, depending on what channels you watch and what you don't watch, this one is owned by Scottish car enthusiasts. I don't know if that'll show up on camera. I don't think it's going to show up on camera. There is a sticker on the bonnet saying Scottish car enthusiasts though. And depending if you do watch his channel, you'll have seen the video where he's putting the alloy wheels on instead of the poverty spec wheels with the wheel trims was on. There's a Mazda RX. RX8, I believe they are, RX7, RX8. Always nice and black. Everything looks better in black. Yeah, it's the RX8, of course it is. I do like them. Even though they've got the Wankel engine in. And then again, I can't really come to a furious driving event without having a Volvo. Volvo 740. And again, another automatic. Oh, it's nice to see the old things being left on the road. Oh, what a lovely looking thing that is. And there's a lovely Mercury Marcus. Mercury Marquis, depending on how you pronounce it. Well, that was here at the Hubner Social. This time, it's here with a different owner. But it's still a lovely car. See, they've been here on both occasions. There's Furious Driving Hat, if you can see it there, and a Hubnut Hat as well. And next to that, maybe a little Alfa Romeo. And again, if you watch some channels, depending on which ones you watch, Mark on Motors, Yellow McGann. And one of the things that is here today is this lovely Lincoln Continental. Now this one I believe is a Diamond Jubilee edition. So sumptuous, so luxurious. I think that's called a half padded roof or a quarter padded roof. Obviously the portholes in the back. They do indicate it is indeed a Diamond Jubilee edition. The fake spare wheel hump on the back is a upholstered in exactly the same material as the roof is. Wonderful condition. What a lovely car. Two door, not available in four doors. The size of the doors. Of course, the biggest thing is under the bonnet. The size of the space under the bonnet. And yet it's not all filled with engine. The engine stops about two thirds of the space under the bonnet. And then it's fan, radiator, and a load of dead space in front of the radiator between that and the grill on the front of the car. It truly is a lovely car. And of course the headlamp covers, which I believe on this would be maybe vacuum operated. So have a quick look inside and see if we can see if they are. Well, it looks as though they could well be electric operated. And next to that, 50s American pickup, side mounted spare wheel with a cut out in the fender to accommodate the tyre. Lovely brown floorboards, toolbox in the back. A little bit of patina on the truck, makes it look really good. Mexican blanket on the seats. Oh, yeah. 
Lovely looking truck though. And we're coming to a more modern convertible Beetle V5 engine. And I'm not well up on modern Beetles. Well, if you know anything specific about the V5, if that is the uh, configuration of the engine or is it just a nomination that it has, leave a comment below, let me know. Do you like the covers over the headlamps? Very individualistic. Just notice this Westfield. Not exactly sure what engine is inside of it. That's a lot of fun on the open road though. It's a bit drafty when you're on the motorway. Lovely old Mini that's currently playing Havoc with the camera because of the sunlight. The sun really is playing Havoc with it. Full length of Basto sunroof. Lovely original interior in there. Polished wood on the dashboard. Well, this one's that aged. It's not actually a Mini, it's a Mini Minor. One of the very early ones. As such, there's only floor mats. The floor isn't fully carpeted. Nice wooden steering wheel. It's just a shame the sun's playing havoc with the car, unfortunately. Right, for those of you that haven't been here before and you're looking to come down here at some point, as you can see, the body shop's down there in the distance. That's the garage reception, the garage behind it. That there is entrance, one of the entrances into the diner. And then over there, there's the bar downstairs. Function rooms upstairs with the outdoor balcony. Really is a wonderful place. Yeah.